Say something. I mean, you guys are the biggest Asian American pod in Queens, right? <laughs> Say Should you start your very own Asian based podcast? Well, we're here to answer the question with the hottest Asian podcast based out of Flushing, Queens. The worst Asian podcast, guys. Please introduce yourselves, guys. Yo, what's up? My name is Linji. This is my co-host, Ben. Yo, what's up, guys? We're based out of Flushing, Queens. Uh, we're in our mid-30s right now. We've been living in Flushing our entire lives. This guy was actually born in Flushing Hospital, yes. so he's got some cred to him. And uh, we just like to talk about things that relate to our asian Americanness and what it's like to be like a Queens person, a real New Yorker. Just to give you guys some context, we're going to run some of the viral clips that have got millions and millions and millions of views from the Worst Asian Pod. Run it! Westerners probably find Japanese culture more interesting and like quirky and fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they find Korean culture more cool and hip. Yeah, that's a really good way of describing it. They would probably want to experience Japanese culture, but they would want to be Korean. Yeah. They're both like top tier, but for two different reasons, though. God, Chinese bakery food sucks so hard. What? It's so plain and bland. I'm like, yo, yo yeah, I know. Yo. Exactly, that's right. yeah, let's just give it. I'm going to just say it now. It's like I'm eating prison food. I'm semi-triggered. Yeah, you should be. Why do Asian girls all have small boobs? Why? Because only A's are acceptable. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up, bro. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Listen, guys, I like it because it's kind of like uh, it's wholesome enough. It's edgy enough. And that's like sort of this perfect space for it to go viral amongst like Asian yappies, right? Like people who are in the corporate workforce. But they, they might have these discussions low key on the side low when they're drinking after some soju or after whatever this or that. But never put it out there. Like right? describe your podcast to us like in the in the simply like two sentences. It's non-serious. It's just about your day-to-day -day Asian things. Like, it's not highbrow. It's not lowbrow. It's somewhere in the mid stuff. It's two guys bantering in the back of the bar. Yeah. So it's Pretty Asians much. being, two regular Asian guys being moderately, like, not too intense, but still funny. But is it based in fact? Like, do you bring up factual stuff usually? Like, we try. Or, no. <laughs> or is it just, like, opinionated? Because I know that you guys also talk about Korean barbecue a lot, right? Yes. Well, there's a couple episodes about it. We just like to talk about things that we can relate to, right? Things yeah. that, like I said, we talk about at the back of the bar and everything. It's not anything that's going to, like, change your life, per se. We're not giving you advice that's going to make you millions of dollars. It's just nice, <laughs> fun conversations <laughs> that we're trying to have that I think a lot of people can relate to. Because the problem is, like, there's lots of podcasts, and they really just talk about, like, let's say dating and sex and things like that. From time to time, we'll dabble in that. That's true, right? We will dabble in that. But most of the time, that's not what everyone wants to talk about, right? And so at the same time, I would say, like, we're not necessarily old. Old, but we're old enough that we've lived a life and we have some experiences and we bring some value that way. Right. So it's not just the worst Asian podcast. It's actually the most relatable Asian guy podcast. <laughs> That's what we yeah. hope so. That's what we hope so. You can yeah. say that, yeah. Um, what's your guys' background? Like you said, you touched on it earlier, but what is your exact background? Because this is probably the only podcast that I'm familiar with that is based out of Flushing Queens or Queens in general. I mean, I know there's a couple ones from other ethnicities, but as far as Asian ones go, this is the only one I'm familiar with. Yep. Uh, I guess I'll start first. Uh, born and raised Flushing, Queens. You're Korean? I am Korean. Yes, sir. So I am Korean uh, in my mid-30s as well. I've known Linji since we were pretty much little kids. Since uh, we Wait, wait. Give, me, give us your stats. Your uh, weight, height. What did we uh, okay, talk? I'm at the combine. Um, I list at 6'2", I think, on a good day. Uh, <laughs> You're a big 6'2", though. I'm, I'm Straight up. I'm th Huge. I'm talking, I think I'm talking I'm, to Mark Gasol right now. But no, <laughs> no. I am I am fat and pudgy. I, I think I'm 240 on a good day. I just used your bathroom, so yeah. I think I'm did, like 235 now. Did you so. play football ever? No, I actually grew up playing. We did play football a couple times, but not we like play a lot of baseball. Yeah, we played a lot of baseball. Otani, yes, Otani. Otani's like six four. You're almost there. I think Otani's bigger. Isn't he? He's like no, he's six, huge. He's, he's Otani. Like looks like a basketball player. Yeah, he's dense. Man. Yeah, we we actually talk about Otani all the time. We're like he's the goat. You know, he's uh, making the way for like Asian athletes and just Asians in general. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so then, so then you got like, but what made you want to? Talk about all this stuff that you see growing up in this Asian enclave or this hyper mixed zone that is Queens. Because a lot of people do, right. but a lot of people don't talk about it. You know, like the honest truth is like, I think both of us can admit that we don't speak our language that well. We can, we can speak some Korean, we can speak some Chinese, but at the end of the day, we're not really Chinese, Chinese or very Korean, Korean. So the 
part of it that I think is good is that we're trying to learn more about ourselves. And the only way that you can really do that is by having conversations, right? Maybe, like I said, they're not the most sophisticated conversations, but you got to start somewhere. You got to start asking so, the questions. So you would say out of like the variance of experiences in Queens, you guys are on the less Bobby side and on the more Americanized side. If you had to self-categorize. Yeah, of course. Like, like I said, we grew up playing baseball. We used to go to like, like a lot you of great times. same baseball teams. No, not same baseball team. We used to go to the park and try to get like a game together with a bunch of people. Like a pickup baseball. Like a pickup yeah. baseball That's game. That's interesting. Yeah, see, just go to the just park. Just some good old Asians trying to no, be like yeah. the good old Like Mets. the Sandlot. Yeah. You guys are the Sandlot guys of Flushing Queens. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I think we can like mix different boundaries, right? He's a Yankee fan. I'm a Mets fan. But at the same time, we feel American. We feel Korean. We get a lot of everything. We're, we're like, uh, what's it like? Jack of all trades, masters of so, none. So, but mm. what about like, you know how Queens can get so Asian and so first gen? Did they ever outside you guys for being more with the American crowd relative to being a Queens kid? Like, because you know, some of the Queens kids, they're right. like living in their world, like deep in there. Obviously, you have the Americanized ones too, you know. There's I think very- for sure, like when you're growing up, we, there was definitely like niches and cliques of people that were super, super hyper Korean, right? Even back then when like K drama, K pop wasn't really a thing. They like still you guys had their own were niche. Never in, like, running no, in, no, in no. Gangs or anything we like were never that, the. Like, any, like sort of wild, like dyed the hairs, tips. Blonde, you, did you guys have the we, Civic we, SI with the hot <laughs> import nights? Some of our friends did. Some we definitely, of our definitely had a lot did. of friends, you know, in that scene, you know, with the Nextels, right? That had like all the lights and stuff Nextels, like that. Nextels, UFO pants. We yeah, went through Air that Force phase One, a little Shango bit ourselves. Jeans. But at the same time, like, we're just generally true to ourselves. You know, it's funny enough, like, most of our friends are Asian per se, but they're all Asian like us, you know, like, not very Asian, Asian. So we're a bunch of not very Asian kids trying to come together and be more American. Why, why do you think that perception of Asian Americans from Queens is not you guys. Usually the perception is we're thinking super AZN. That, I'm oh, saying that, that's yeah, more of what, Would you agree? And mm. That's more of the perception. Yeah, I mean, the perception, if you were to sum up Queens, you're going to say, oh, that's like where all the Fobby Chinese are. But obviously there's a lot of Asian Americans, right, right. that are Americanized, like, what, that are what, into what? Asian stuff, but and maybe grew up closer to, obviously, downtown Flushing, which is super... Bobby, but yeah. you know, you, you have a, you got to experience the American side still. Yeah. Even just like music wise, culturally, if we're speaking like hip hop, right. I think we kind of briefly talked about before, like we grew up with Nas, but at the same time we kind of grew up with rock too. Right. So, you know, like back then you listen to K rock, but then you also listen to hot 97. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, it, back then we listen to like DMX and shit. You know? It's a right. good mixture of everything. I think like the problem now is like, because flushing itself in Queens has gone so mainstream. When people look at Flushing, when they YouTube Flushing, when they Google Flushing on Instagram, whatever, they're just seeing like the specifically viral Asian foods, right? And then they right. connect that with like more Fabi Chinese people. Right. So people are like, you're like, I'm from Queens. They're like, show me your dragon tat. Where's the koi <laughs> fish at? Yeah. And they, you ain't fish. from Queens. Y'all yeah. ain't from Queens, yeah, man. you're not ready. Y'all ain't got the dragon tat. Uh, what, what about, uh, we know Queens has a lot of Asians. There is a kind of a Korean side, right? And then there's, uh, I guess it's predominantly Chinese of different types. But I guess... What about mixing with non-Asians growing up in Queens? What was that like? What was your friend group like? You guys seem like guys who had friends or dated people who were not Asian at some point in your life. But yeah. like, what was- Usually the baseball guys it? date non-Asian girls. I've noticed that. <laughs> no, I'm just, literally, um, I noticed I would that. say actually like for even the start of like our, our elementary school, it was like a good mix, like some black, some white. And middle school, you know, we grew up like more, it was funny, I think in middle school. More Hispanic than it yeah, was Asian. Hispanic, black. So like, you know, we got the hip hop influence from there. Baseball. And then we got the baseball. baseball. Le you baseball. Know, you know, we got that. El football. Capitan. Football America. Football as well. Yeah. And, uh, People sometimes forget that like Queens is not just Flushing, right? Flushing is like the biggest, hottest thing right now, but Queens is the mecca of like the world's culture. It's a big melting pot of so many other cultures, right? Yes, the Chinese, myself, are like prominent and Flushing, but we are not the only culture that's How, how do you feel about that? People blanketing it, that with that image. Now? I think we were talking about this before. Like there is that older generation of non-Asian people, Caucasian people within Queens that maybe are batting an eye to the change, right? To the Asian gentrification of Queens. But it's, it's if you look historically, it's the case with every town, right? When a new population comes in, they're gonna take over a little bit and they're gonna move somewhere else. That, not, that is not necessarily inherently a bad thing. That's just the way that the world works and flows. Yeah, how come uh, every time I go into the city and I say I'm from Queens, everybody's asking me about noodles and dumplings yeah, and, what, yeah. and they got all these Korean barbecues. I mean, I don't really know anything about that. Yeah, Yo, I, think- I know Ling Ji got really offended every time we say we're a little too lazy to go out to Queens to get food. <laughs> all the time, all Queen, the time. First of all, can I just say, I know Queens has better ethnic food than Manhattan, especially per dollar. 
I get it. Yeah, for sure. And, but that's also why I live in the city, so I don't have to go to Queens all the time. Besides you guys just being lazy, I would say like Queens has less fancy good food. You may get like good food here in, in the city as well, but it's like on the higher tier, right? It's catered to the people that generally live in Manhattan, bankers. right? Bankers. Yes, bankers, bankers, Walsy bros, like the stuff like that. Queens, it's catering good food to a more common group of people, like a more lower class. The everyday Joe, I would say. The right, everyday right, right. Asian Joe. No, the food, it, it hits a little different out there. I mean, I always sure. describe it as like Manhattan kind of reminds me of like private school <clears throat> and then the boroughs remind me of public school. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Like or, or if you want to say, if you guys have been to Hong Kong, Hong Kong Island is known as the very international kind of like more westernized, fancier, expensive area. And then Kowloon side and new territories is like where all the True. people live, you know? Um, what is the deal with Queens lately? You know, we, we're talking about it's not just what the media makes it to be. It's not just what the food media makes it to be. But let's talk about what it is made to be, which is this crazy Asian land. Hmm. Do you, I mean, what, what's going on there? What's, what, why has Queens increased in public profile 10x in the past five years? I think like personally speaking, I would say there is a lot of, foreign seas money that's coming yeah. in, right? You see a lot of uh, flushing is becoming more expensive. There's more apartments being built. And some of that is being taken up or absorbed by foreign money that's just buying something here, either as an investment or as like a temporary thing for like your kids to come over and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> you know, there People is a- are, hey, there hey, is, I'm involved in that. There is a real part of that. But we forget that like Queens still caters to the everyday person. Immigrants come to Queens because they can find a niche within Queens that they can relate to. Even speaking no English, speaking like some random dialect that's not Chinese, that's not whatever. Right, your one's own needs, right? Right, yeah. You can always find, and I don't just mean Asian people, like any minority can come to Queens, find your group of people, make a home there, and then from there, maybe in the future, you, you move out of Queens, right? So but Queens is like a mini microcosm of the world. Yeah. Well, all right, let me ask you this. Does diversity actually work in Queens? Are people kind of united? Is it, or is there any beefs or tension? Do you feel that because you have all these different ethnicities that it's kind of, it's kind of hard to get stuff done sometimes, like if I'm, even from a political standpoint. Sometimes it is. You know how they talk about trying to unite all Asians together? Like there's different groups of Asians. We all have different beliefs. We have like different um, priorities and stuff. Immigration yeah, waves. Exactly. Like class. it's hard to say that, oh, can't we just unite all the Asians? It's the same thing when you're saying, can't we just unite all the minority districts in Queens, right? It, of course it's hard because we have our differences. We're still different people, even though the rest of the world are just bottling us together. Uh, ben, what do you think? I was going to actually add to that Flushing has become like a tourist spot now. So we do get a lot of, you know, foreign overseas people that aren't just Asian coming into Flushing. So it's kind of like... You mean to actually like get a hotel stay or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So if you just go to like Main Street, you know, people will come there and it's like a melting pot for people to just try a lot of the food. Almost like you a know? food Disneyland or something like yeah. that, right? So even before, I remember on the map, now you, now you see Flushing being considered like you know, like a Chinatown. And then there's a Korea town, like you could say more up towards like Northern Boulevard. Right. Main Near Street. Bayside. Yeah. And like, you know, but you want like full deal experience of like Chinatown. It's kind of like Main Street's where it's at. Yeah. Back no. in the day when we grew up, Flushing was not known as Chinatown. It was not one oh, of the Chinatowns. Okay. The only Chinatowns in the city was Manhattan Chinatown, yep. the OG Chinatown. Now, technically we are a Chinatown. Now, now technically it's even bigger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I, bigger. I, I, do think, I do think with food media, the way TikTok and YouTube has become, has been able to highlight all the food. It basically lets people know, like even last time I was in downtown Flushing, man, I was eating all these uh, different um, like roll bings, like meat pies that are so good off the street. It reminded me of China. And I was like, yo, I haven't had this experience since I was in Beijing. Right. And I was like, wow, I could just go to Queens and get it. And it's like, I think for people who are not gonna travel to Asia, China, whatever, you can just go to Flushing and then walk around, stay there for four days, you eat, your heart full, then you can go to Manhattan, spend a couple of days in Manhattan, see the glitzy New York, and then oh, yo, that's, that's a great crazy. trip. Crazy, yo! What a travel agency start doing a combo package, three nights in Flushing, three nights in the city. Yeah, exactly. Might as well, right, dude? You can go from Broadway to Roosevelt Ave, and then you know. Yeah, another good point about like Flushing is that like not only do we have a lot of money coming in, right? Like today we saw like a freaking orange McLaren just like driving on Northern Boulevard. It should not be driving on Northern Boulevard. Yeah, also yeah, because like it was just low. But who I'm was like, driving? Let's be real. An Asian dude. It was an Asian yeah. dude. <laughs> it was an Asian dude. I think he was coming out of like Dwayne Reed, I think. So I was just like, was right. he a skillful driver, or was he was he swerving? I'm not gonna lie. Was his rims was his rims curbed up? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was doing a pretty good job not to like. Right, right. You know, so. 
you know, you know like, like, he wants to scrape the bottom. Like the, the whole, whole wave side. of people coming to Flushing, it has its pros and its cons, right? The yeah. cons are, well, the pros are obviously that it's bringing attention to the area, different cuisines. You can come back home and try different things. It's bringing people that would never try that stuff to come into Queens and try all different cuisines. But at the same time, like, it does kind of raise the price of everything right. for the people mm-hmm. that are living in Queens. It's almost like, gentrified. Like, just like you guys yes. came in as a group and then maybe whoever was there looked at you a certain way. These new people are coming over in the McLarens. Exactly. And, and you're looking at them like, oh, man, they're about to gentrify the Asian Americans. Yeah, exactly. Now we're becoming like the old species kind of thing. Yeah, there's a reason why Ben has lived in Flushing, Queens his whole life, and he's probably never going to buy property in Flushing, Queens, right? Because <laughs> No, it's true, though, because the prices have gone up so much, right? Crazy. People like him that are middle income can't really keep up with stuff like that. No, I, I hear crazy stories of almost in any hot housing market of people getting outbidded like my friends who work regular jobs are like i thought i do well and i put in a bid right. and then i, I got outbidded right i got outbidded by like a hundred thousand dollars by some random person and you're like where is this straight cash from? offer too yeah. right? yeah yeah it's crazy i guess you know there was uh there was this thing called white flight that's white people leaving an area and it's for whatever reason uh, but uh, sometimes asians cost it because asians moved in because asians liked to move in where the white people would yeah. when they came up. And then yeah. there was too many Asians and the white people were like, ah, I'm out of here. And then now <laughs> you got like the yellow American flight. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. Like, yeah. Now it's yellow. Queens, because yeah. you got yellow people from yellow land to come. Rich over. people. Yeah, you, rich no, Asian you got people. The, you got people. the people whose parents own coal mines versus the people whose parents do not own coal mines. Like, the, 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 yeah, <clears throat> if you don't have a natural resource ownership of a pipeline or something like that. This... What, I have a really, I have a one question about this because we're talking about kind of this new wave of maybe typically more well-off fobs, right? Or immigrants, whatever you want to call them. I don't mean fobs. Do not call us fobs if you are poor to me. (laughs) (laughs) Poor ABC calling rich fobs out. But no, I'm just saying, do you think there's blending? Like, do you think the Chinese, and maybe let's just say Chinese Americans, to the Chinese, like, is there a crossover? Are people dating each other, partnering each other? I have some friends who own businesses in Queens who are ABCs, and they do have some partners with, like, Chinese people. Like, do you see that relationship building? And yeah, is what, it, what's it like between the new McLaren crowd and the people who just, like, yeah. I just worked hard to get a Lexus? The <laughs> McLaren yeah, Chinese right? versus the Toyota Camry Chinese. Okay, as a proud owner of a Toyota RAV4 myself, I put myself in that category. <laughs> right. But do, do, in order to do business, you just have to be able to uh, be peaceful with the people that you're trying to do business with, right? Even if it's only um, skin deep and you're not actually caring about whatever, just to be able to cooperate and do business, you have to work together. Regardless of if you think the person's coming over here with too much money and making things difficult on you, I think simply because as Asian people, we're very uh, business-minded. We're very like goal-centric, like focused on that. Sometimes we take our personal opinions out of it, right? If you want to do good business, you got to cooperate together. What about socially? Like, do you think there's mixing like the scenes? It's got to be tough too, because there's different mindsets. Maybe younger people that are coming in, uh, it's a it's a different mindset because they're coming in with the funds of their parents, so there's less basic necessities that that they have to worry about. So their day to day priorities are different, right? But I think at the same time, you can still hang out together and have a good time, right? Just because you and I are different social classes, doesn't that mean we can't share a beer together and just be able to talk? Right. You just have to unite so over have, interests. You have rich fob friends. With yeah, parents? of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ben, Ben, uh, yes. do you feel left out at all? Do you wish there was a bunch of rich Korean fobs moving into Flushing? Um, because like, what would that be I like? Koreans get gentrified, not gentrified, but like yes. pushed out of certain zones of Flushing into their the, own zone. More Jersey. into Murray Hill, right? I think actually, I pretty much do live around Murray Hill. And, uh, <laughs> oh, that, you nailed it. You nailed it right there. Right. No, like I heard a it, was, it, was, right it was very Korean for a while. And then it sort of became now it's like 70, 30 Chinese, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, like, I think, like, the Koreans, right? We migrated more up, right? So, like, Towards Bayside. Yeah, like, east, Bayside, yeah. the Little Necks, you know? And I guess some parts of, like, Long Island now, too. Um, and, you know, Linji's people, your people, right. just, like, came in. It's just, like, started spreading more. So, like, Flushing Main Street is just expanding. And a lot of the money, like, you know, we're talking, is coming from overseas, you know? And they're expanding very rapidly. But at the same time, people, f- people always forget that... Bayside, Flushing area, Murray Hill area is like the second biggest K-Town in New York City. Yeah. Obviously, we have, we have yeah. the one here in Manhattan on 34th Street, right? That's, that's what people think of Koreatown when they think of New York City. I would argue living near the K-Town in Flushing that it is probably like, it has more food, has more diversity for yes. sure. You could definitely well, get as much fancy stuff there. No, I, I think there is a lot of Koreans in Flushing, but more people associate Koreans with New Jersey. I was just going to mention that too, yeah. Park, right? Right, 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 exactly. 
So what's it, what is the difference between a Pal Park Korean from and a Fort Lee Korean from a from a Flushing Bayside? Uh, Flushing Koreans are way superior. Not just joking. <laughs> um, you know what's funny? I have some friends from Flushing, and you know I'll go see my New Jersey Korean friends too. Um, I don't. It's got to be different, right? It's a different environment to be raised in. I I, I kind of want to. Flushing uh, Koreans are not going to like it, but I kind of like the New Jersey Koreans. I think they're a little more refined. It's flushing more polite. working class <laughs> Koreans. Calm. The flushing okay. Koreans seem a little more uh, working class, right? Yeah, a little on the edge. You know, where do you class? Where do you classify yourself? Then are they a little more oh. gangster out in like I guess you'd say in Jersey, New York? Oh, uh, New York, Queens, Queens. Oh yeah, North. yeah, flushing, yeah. Thuggish, polite. ruggish. Yeah. Well, flushing more is known urban, to have the uh, you know what, whatever crowd you want to run with. Let's just say this: it's available. Yep. Whatever, whatever type of squad you want to end up living your yeah. life amongst, you can run amongst. But that we crowd. do love each other, and you know, shout out to my friends from the from the Jersey Dirty Jersey. You know, right, right, right. Um, I guess why analyze trivial Asian things? You know how like some people are like, oh my gosh, I only want to watch this channel that's going to teach me to invest in index funds or trade stock options, right. and then finally it's like, boom, I like it because you guys like say what a regular conversation might be. Right. But you guys are just more uh, making it available for everybody versus people needing to have a really interesting group of Asian friends that's willing to discuss the difference between New York Korean barbecue versus L.A. Korean barbecue mm -hmm. and things like that. Dude, that's exactly the point. Sometimes I get comments from some of our listeners that really, you know, make it the point that we're just being able to like share an experience with them that they, they have not experienced themselves, right? So maybe it's Asian people like in the Midwest somewhere, maybe someone that's married into an Asian family, maybe it's an adoptee or something. So you can learn ab all about your Asianness from some other podcast and maybe talk about like more highbrow political things. But if you just want to like have the same experience as, as having growing up in Flushing, that big thing, that's what we're talking about, right? The same kind of bullshit that we would talk about like back then in the lunchrooms or like in the back of the bar, that's the stuff that we bring onto the podcast. It's not super high brow or anything, right? It's just fun conversations about the little nuances about being Asian. Uh, do, do you feel like that? Or like, did you, do you view it that way? Or you're like, man, I was just, I'm just talking about what I like to talk about. Well, the beautiful thing about what we have going on, I think a lot of times when I do hear our guests, I mean, or just people that do listen to us, they really enjoy um, our chemistry, our banter, our back and forth. And I think that was heavily based on the success of the show. So it's just a very intimate, organic, you know, real raw things. A lot of people even ask us like, hey, is this like all scripted that you guys talk about? A lot of times it's just us, like 95%. It's just us just off the dome, just speaking on our mind. It's the stuff. same conversations that we would have. And we want to bring people in as if they're like the third wheel friend, right? Just having a good time at the back of the bar. Right. Um, a lot of people tell us like all the time, it feels like, oh, it just feels like I'm part of the conversation, you know? And no, it makes sense. Your guys' chemistry is crazy. Why is Korean stuff popping so hard right now? And Ben, I want to ask you because you're Korean, but... Do you feel like you benefit from the Korean bump? How much? I think the truth is, the truth is, everybody, any guy that's Korean benefits somewhat from the bump. You're somewhere near the blast zone, but how close to the epicenter of it are you and how far are you and how much are you benefiting from it? I was going to say, if you guys watch the Hurt Locker, you know how like Jerry Renner's like disarming bombs? I'm like right there. Like I am just, I'm in it. <laughs> I feel all of it. You're yeah. like... Okay. I'm enjoying all of that right now. That's me right there. No, I but I, I, can you provide some details or what, what do you mean? Like, or like, what does it mean? Like, like, obviously, I guess <sighs> Korean things and by yeah. proxy, Korean American things, you're Korean American. Yeah. They're just popping right now. Like, there's so many girls that are like in love with the archetype, in love with just <laughs> everything, right? Like, yes. whether you fit it or not. Of course, maybe if you fit it, you maybe even be able to play into it more than somebody else. What is your own personal experience that you can share with that? Um, it's a lot easier, I guess you can say. I, you know, more opportunity. You know, when I'm not even asking for it. So like, I'll just be out, and you know, a random stranger. You know, like you're out in K Town, for example. Yeah, right? for example, I mind my business. You know, people think I'm like undercover cop. I'm just trying to have a beer. Someone come up to me, usually female. I'm like, are you Korean? You know, I'm like, well, yes, I am. I don't even have to prove it. You know, it's just like, oh my god, I love, I love BTS. I'm like. Now I'm like, yes, me too. <laughs> and you see me, I look nothing like them, right? Well, you look Let's like BTS is security, right? Yes, I do. Like, um, I Yo, who's that one action star, the big guy, the chunky? Oh, Korean? from Train to Busan? Yeah. I had a really uh, attractive friend of mine. She's told me that, and I was like, yes, this is my way. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. He's a, key, he's a badass, yeah. He is. Don Lee. Is oh, it Don Lee? I think so, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's a, yeah I, got, I got that uh, comparison the first time, and I was like a little offended. And now I'm like, I love it. But when, when did this start happening? Oh, man, if I had to... When did you see the boost? When did the you start boost? having non-Asian women, whether they were white or black or Latina or whatever, even a different type of Asian, let's say Southeast Asian, come up to you and be like, 
are you cool? <laughs> and you go, <laughs> uh, yeah. I might be. Uh, I don't know. I guess um, a little like in, for you old heads, Big Bang. You know, when Big Bang was first starting, mm, I would say. Okay. Right? They definitely helped a lot. And Gen 2 yes. of the K-pop group. Yeah, right? and then, you know, for sure, like BTS, uh, you know, full throttle. Yeah. And all the way. And I look nothing like Dude, them. do you understand that as three Chinese guys here, we've never, by a decent looking woman, has have they approached me and been like, are you Chinese? Yo. <laughs> like maybe once in my life. Yes. That, that, that is like, not something. It, so, it does not happen. But the thing is, I feel like, your That's guys' lit. time is gonna come. No, I just gotta enjoy it as much yeah, as I yeah, can. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta milk this. You gotta yeah. ride the wave. I gotta milk this, bro. Yeah, That's when, what it is. I, do you feel? Do you ever get with your Korean bros and talk about this and be like, "Dude, my app is like ding 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 ding." <laughs> and you went like this five years hey, ago. Don't like, lie. You put you put the little yin yang flag oh, in there. Yeah. You put the little uh, Korean. I flag will say in this. There. I will say this. You know, on just behalf of Asian males, I think it's my you know my duty, our my duty to yes. represent us. You know, if you're Chinese, whatever Asian you are, I will do my best for, you know, for us. <laughs> we, we thank you for your service. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No problem. I guess, I guess, this, and this is to switch it to the Chinese side, Lingjie, is it ever going to come for Chinese guys? Dude. What, what, what is happening for Korean guys right now in the, in the dating market? Is it ever going to come for Chinese guys? Okay. I'm going to break this down, right? Height is a very big factor because a lot of people have heightism. Ben is lucky enough to be six foot two, right? So a lot of these stereotypical, like, hot Korean K-pop, K-drama guys are actually of the t taller variety, right? I would right? say more the K-drama guys than the K-pop guys, right? Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, guys. To your point. I have noticed that the younger generation of Chinese Americans or, like, Chinese people that have come from overseas, they are r ridiculously tall. I'm not sure if they're, like, on a better milk diet or something, but... <laughs> that is going to add to it, right? So I do think there is a time for it in terms of, like, the physical appeal I'm talking about. Now, if you want to talk about, like, culturally speaking, that is kind of tough, right? Because it's not like Western culture is not familiar with Chinese culture already. They're very familiar, right? Well, they're familiar and they're against it. Yeah, they're familiar <laughs> and they're against it. So, like, we have to play against that as well, right? right? There are little, like, there are political reasons why it's harder for a Chinese guy to be as popular as a Korean guy is, right? We don't have the wave of K-dramas and, uh, um, K-pop to like use to like uh, boost us up, yeah, right? Right, right. We well, sort of like that. how Samsung is the number two phone company in America, but Huawei got banned yeah, from America. Got, yeah. And, and Lingji, you have a raise a good point is that there has been decades, actually, let's just say a century of exposure to Chinese culture. Yes. And to this point, Americans are still like, ah, that shit is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that, it, I, I it's love been selective the, exposure. Too. I can use chopsticks, but that ain't American culture. Like, we're still separating. And that, I think, the the alienness that Chinese culture gets seen with is like as an American Asian American like I can understand it but it's still kind of like shocking to me sometimes. Right. One final point like Chinese food Chinese cuisine is fire. It can hit. It can be the Everybody greatest thing it. that yeah, yeah everyone loves it. But that is not sexy. That's not sexy in the way that uh, Korean music is K drama yeah. is right. Chinese food, even if it's superior, even if they love it, that's not going to get you dates necessarily, right? If you're younger, you cannot present cuisine and use that as a reason why to, like, get more dates. Dude, if you make the music that makes them dance, it, they will let you get in their pants. To just Usually, bring it that's it. It's more about... <laughs> it's more about... Uh, yeah, it's, it's less... It's more about the music and less about the munchies. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. More um, about the music, less about the yummies. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the future of the Asian-American identity? I mean, I'm, you guys are now... You know, deep in the podcast space, millions and millions and millions of views. You guys constantly create viral clips here and there that, you know, on this platform or that platform, 10, 20, 30 million. I mean, how connected are you with other Asian American podcasters and where do you see this whole thing going? I think like the good or the bad thing is it's still a very small bubble, right? However you want to view it, it's a very small bubble. So we are fortunately able to connect with creators like yourself, other podcasters, other it's not like, YouTubers. Uh, CBS Five is asking you to be right. There. It's not. It's not. It's still a very small group, right? No matter how. Uh, mainstream it is it's still a very small group of us so we have the luxury of actually being able to connect and do stuff like this collab on things like that but at the same time i do think that that bubble needs to grow and how do we grow it i honestly don't know that's the tough question right i'm not going to give you the right answer on that you look at how big uh korean media is you look at how big chinese food is it's still not enough so that it's mainstream and acceptable by everyone so I see the world where us Asians are blending together and can come together, hopefully. But like I talked about before, Asians of different places, we have different priorities, right? So it's going to be hard. It's, it's a challenge, but mm. I think it's going to come. Some people in representation yeah. mode. Some people in survival mode. Mm -hmm. Some people just right. get trying to own 100 buildings or mm -hmm. 100 houses mode, right? Yeah. Um, 
Anything, Ben, close with? Uh, no, I just want to say, like, you know, piggybacking on what Linji's saying is, you know, like, look at us right now, right? Like, I'm surrounded by three handsome Chinese men, right? And you guys put me on, put us on, you know? And this is the part where I'm trying to say, like, we're trying to work together, you know, create that unison, you know? Um, I think now we're living in a time where people are starting to recognize, because before, everyone just assumed you're Chinese. If you're Asian, you're Chinese, right? right. But now the fact that people, you know, with technology, I guess you can say social media wise, people actually take the time of like, oh, there's actual, you know, nuances, differences, you know, little things that they can now pay attention to. Well, so, yeah. That's cool, man. Uh, shout out to the Worst Asian Podcast, guys. Check out their link down below. Ling Ji and Ben, uh, just two Asian guys who wanted a podcast and talking about relatable Asian things, man. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate it. And uh, full, I mean, we knew Ben for years partying with Ben, by the way, <laughs> yeah, partying. Yeah. Yeah. big guy. I always be like, man, big guy. And it's like, you know, yeah, it's like, but it's cool, shots. but it's cool. Now we're in a similar space. Content yeah. creators. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Appreciate it. You guys yeah. are on and good to get to know Lingji here. So everybody check them out down below. Worst Asian podcast. Who knows? Maybe it could be the best Asian podcast one day, <laughs> but they uh, are Asian and show a lot of humility. So,